what we get off this land, we need to replace it back to this land and sort of live in harmony with with the land. I think there's been a huge disconnect between some of the science that's been done around water quality results and the link to the relevant farm practices. At present in both the Tully and the Johnston basins we have monitoring at the end of valley. That means the water contributed to that sampling station is across a lot of different land uses and a huge area so it's very difficult for a particular landholder to relate and to understand what their relative contribution is. We've got some very engaged landholders who said, show me it's my nitrogen and I'll fix the problem. From when we got the funding to when we started, it was 12 to 18 months before you gather a team of people to do monitoring, to get the wet season, to get your water samples and all that sort of stuff. So it was always going to take time. I don't want to destroy the reef. And I had seen where some of the bioreactors had gone in and said, oh, well, I've got a system that probably suits that. The MIP has been a positive experience simply by the fact that it's engaging with growers. If it really needs to be sold to the growers themselves. If they do adopt these things, you know, you are actually going to make a change, not just on your farm, but actually in the reef lagoon. There was an opportunity to use some government funding to help modernise our business. For every dollar the government put in, the growers would have put in $3. To build a wetland, you're looking at $400,000, and, and if a grower how to do that, it's not affordable. We put in a uh, wetlands slash silt truck. It was really good to see a good amount of sediment poured on the bottom of that. And it's generally all good soil, so you put it back in your paddock. And we're already looking at other areas on the farm to do the same thing. One of the most positive outlooks for the MIP, I think, is to be able to show a cause and effect relationship between what is done on the land and how that is affecting the local streams and not just at the end of the valley. It's a catch-22. We need to be sustainable whilst improving water quality. So growers have got on board. We put in monitoring stations, sub-catchment monitoring, try and understand what's happening. Growers or landholders feel empowered and they can actually make changes that they know are making a difference. If we don't take care of what's on land here, it's going to affect what's out there in the ocean. You can't separate both of them. They all got to interact to work together.